Hello and welcome to Keys News. On the programme tonight, how a man who lost everything after being the centre of a false rape accusation wants to help those in a similar situation. How the North West is leading the way in the Northern Powerhouse Initiative. Aid for Humanity and Bolton-based Lavelle Division collect donations to send to refugees in Calais. And magical illuminations and reflections light the skies on Salford Keys. Good evening. Our top story tonight. A man who lost everything after being falsely accused of rape has spoken of his desire to help others in a similar situation. Coyote Madupi Ojo had his world torn apart after a two and a half week police custody and a lack of self-confidence left him in tatters. He's determined to ensure that this does not happen to anyone else. I went down to find out how he's planning to do so. Obviously there is no other help out there. I'm here to sort of uh, lean on. Um, my resources are their resources, you know, and this is not only for falsely accused men, this is for real victims who have been raped, you know, real victims of sexual violence, you know, they can, they can reach out, get hold of me and I can place them with my team and, and, and we can try and help and give them the right support because that's what's lacking, the real support. It doesn't exist, you know, so I'm here to sort of fill, well, I'm here to fill that void and unfortunately my life was using as an example um, to be able to reach this situation now. But we're going to have to sort of try and turn it into a positive and try and help people who, have, who feel that they have no hope. Even though I've taken one hell of a knock, but you know what, I'm still alive. That matters. I've still got both my arms, legs and my brain. So um, this will be the greatest combat known to man, that I can assure you. New regional labour statistics show that the North West is leading the way in the Northern Powerhouse Initiative. The aim is to help rejuvenate the North to compete with the South East. Lewis Smith has been looking into Manchester's performance. Manchester's football teams may be flying high in the Premier League, but there's some league table statistics that the city won't be so proud of. As the annual State of the City report shows that Manchester has higher unemployment than any of the UK's other core cities. Across eight chapters, the report delves deep into Manchester's healthcare, economics, education and general quality of life, and does present some interesting revelations. Perhaps the most concerning section of the report is the one regarding poverty. 36.5% of children under 16 living in Manchester are considered to be living in poverty, and over 30% of Manchester's residents are classified as out-of-work poor. There has also been a remarkable rise in the levels of abuse reported in the previous 12 months as approximately 2,000 cases have been reported to Greater Manchester Police. Although these statistics are in line with previous reports, it does beg one very important question. What do you do to improve it? This is the question that I pose to Salford and Eccles MP, Rebecca Long-Bailey. So first of all, the government needs to make sure that it invests adequately in local government, and it isn't. And secondly, we need to develop a national economic and industrial strategy that invests in places like Salford and brings cutting-edge technologies and manufacturing to places like Salford so that we can have highly paid um, and highly skilled jobs. And then the third element is education. We need a top-class education system. With the Manchester devolution deal now in place, funding to local councils is key to addressing these issues. Conservative Trafford councillor Sean Anstey feels the government is getting it right. So, so devolution is not necessarily about having more money to spend. It's about being able to spend the money that an area already has in a smarter way. So, you know, how do you get council funding, health and social care funding, uh, police funding? How can you look at the place? You look at Greater Manchester and say, this is what we need to do. These are the services that we need to provide. And we can take smarter decisions as a result of that. With such a wide range of opinions, it's perhaps difficult to draw any conclusions on what the true implications of the report are. One thing that seems certain is that as Manchester moves on in this era of devolution, the city is set for a key chapter in its history. Lewis Smith, Keys TV News, across Greater Manchester. A Muslim from Birmingham, Adid Hussein, has moved to Manchester after his family beat him up and disowned him when he came out as gay earlier on this month. Adid joined us here in the studio earlier today to talk about his struggles and experiences of being the only gay Muslim in his family. Yeah. 
now Adid Hussein joins us on the sofa. First of all, huge welcome to Keys News. Um, obviously, what you went through was an extremely traumatic experience. If we could just go back to this time last month, can you tell us your emotions and how you were feeling at that time when you came out? Honestly, it was the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. I mean, I've been through a lot way worse stuff, but doing that sitting down and then saying them two words can totally make a life change, honestly. I was scared. I was, I was literally in tears from the beginning to the end, like, non-stop. Um, it's just, you're scared of the reaction. I, that's one thing I was really scared of, the reaction of what they're going to get, especially from an Asian culture. You're thinking, oh, my God, this is the biggest step anyone can do. And I did it, and I was like, oh, my God. I, it's just like a weight off my shoulders literally gone. And I felt so happy afterwards. And it was just all the scaredness and the worry and... You just think about the future and stuff like that. So it's, it was up and down, but I'm so happy now, honestly. And what was it that made you come to Manchester? What was it that attracted you to Manchester? The sport. I mean, I've got a friend, I've got a few friends in Manchester and they've come out and obviously the parents have not took it like as good as they can, but they've contacted a few groups, societies, and they've supported them, housing, food, money, like, literally everything there's in groups that you could go to have a chat share your experiences and that's one thing I really like especially as soon as I walked into Manchester I was like oh my god it's so <laughs> funny here there's hustle and bustle and just rush and honestly it just makes me so happy seeing all this kind of stuff and I'm like yay indeed it's so good now to see you come into the studio today and so happy and we're all very very proud of you as well for coming out so a huge thank, thank you. you for joining us on the yeah, sofa and sharing you. your story thank you thank you very much and you can catch an extended interview with a deed on our website, keysnews.net. Now, Bolton-based Aid for Humanity and fashion company Lavelle Division have teamed up to provide refugees in Calais with food, clothes and more. Trucks full of essentials were loaded up and have arrived in France this week. Ben Hobson has more. This is the scene that greeted Aid for Humanity workers in Calais this week. A fire had burned through the camp, scorching essentials such as tents and food. And today we just try to help and see the people. And you can see here about 10 tents burned last night. The six-hour journey to Calais started here with 12 individuals providing for men, women and children as young as five. Fashion design company Lavelle Division are providing clothes, sleeping bags and much more to give what they can for these vulnerable people. And it started with, I heard about a truck, somebody at the back, one of the businesses here in Unity House was going to send a truck and we thought, we've got 60,000 square foot here of design, warehousing, samples and they're just samples that need a home. It's not just the donations of clothing in the wallowing conditions in Calais that the refugees need. It's also real essentials such as food. Food packs that are carefully selected are of paramount importance to the well-being of these refugees as the conditions are constantly deteriorating. We made food packs for them so it's much easier to distribute when we get there and a lot quicker as well. Because you can imagine each van, if you took your time and everything was separate, it'd take you about three, four hours to do one van. Well, the thing is to do something for someone, I mean first of all we look at it, it's mankind that we're actually helping. It doesn't matter what colour, gender, race, culture, whatever you're from, we, are, we will go out there if there's a call comes out for any of our team which is from Aid for Humanity will be out there to go and help them. This is not about religion this is about humanity yeah. human that's people yeah. that's that's what it's about um, it could be any religion anyone um, any culture race if we can help them we do our best to help them. If you saw this van driving down the M1 normally you wouldn't bat an eyelid so next time you see a van like this on the motorway think twice Ben Hobson, Keys TV News. Now the skies of Salford Keys have been lit up by gigantic figures and installations this week as the Lightwaves event takes place in Media City. The event is free and open for everyone to enjoy up until the 27th of December. Joanna Sinkowska has more. The 15 takes over the Salford Keys public space of a digital art festival, featuring three major installations from international and UK-based artists, as well as pop-up performances, DIY artwork workshops and talks from the artists themselves, 
Lightwave's 2015 is bigger than ever and is completely free. So the first one is a new commission and it's co-presented with the University of Salford and that is Cathedral and Mirrors out here, by, uh, out here on the plaza by the Lowry and that's a beautiful artwork, interactive one, 12 large columns that people can weave between and the more people that move between them the brighter and faster those lights get. Another artwork we've got is Intrude, which is the five large bunny rabbits over by the Blue Peter Gardens, Media City Gardens. Uh, they've gone down very well and we even had Name a Rabbit competition. Our final work is Amaze, and that's based over on Media City Piazza. Uh, a beautiful structural architectural work, really, and that is literally a maze that people can walk through. And there's projections onto that, very psychedelic, um, immersive, I suppose, once you're inside as well. The exhibit features dazzling interactive artworks that light up and change in response to the movement of crowds. Considering the weather that we've had, it started off in rain, cold, blizz you know, it was horrible and yet people were still coming by and getting amused by the rabbits especially. So I think it's lightened up the area, it's original, it's different. I can see areas where they could have improved upon it, but that's partly because there's so much light around here. It, it would look much better in a pitch dark. The artists hope that the event will bring big and wide audience to Salford Keys and reach out to residents as well as those visiting the area. The towering psychedelic attraction full of magical moments is running every day between the 12th and the 27th of December in the heart of Media City. Joanna Sinkowska, Keys TV. Boxer Amir Khan paid a visit to Carlisle this Saturday. He led volunteers from the Amir Khan Foundation and the Penny Appeal, offering moral and physical support to flood victims. Ali Ahmed has this report. Storm Desmond has passed, but left some places devastated. Boxer Amir Khan visited Carlisle, one of the city's worst affected, to offer moral and physical support. The Amir Khan Foundation, along with the Penny Appeal in Carlisle, distributed food to the victims and even toys to children. These people are just like us, like you said, but obviously they've lost their home, and by losing their home, they've lost. Uh, uh, valuable things as well and it does it is, it is a, I mean I can imagine if I lost my home and I had to live on the second floor how I'd feel it'd be very hard so you just you do feel for them the two-time boxing champion also visited the flooded homes you know we never expected anything like this it's like stepping into a different world um, these people have totally nothing and the only people here are people like us who help us how long, how long do you think it'll take you to get back Go, going on, going on the same as if it's as last time, uh, six months. Six I months. would have thought six months. It happened in January, January the eighth, mm. and my son was graduating from university in the June. Uh, and my wife says to them, "We want to be back in our house yeah. for." Uh, he can go for his graduation from here. 5,200 homes were affected with 2.3 billion pounds being disposed by the government for rehabilitation. The British Army along with workers are helping clearing homes as well. Haroon Khan, a professional boxer, believes the Amir Khan Foundation has a set goal. Well, Amir Khan Foundation, what we want to do is, we want, we want to be a charity organised where if there's a disaster, we want to be the first team there. Last night was one of the biggest nights of the year as Star Wars fans made their long-awaited return to the big screen. And the force most certainly awoke for fans arriving at View Cinemas. The Exaverian College Chamber 50-piece orchestra played the movie's iconic theme as fans from across the region made their way to their seats. Sorry about that. Now in entertainment, pros were nominated for the Best Breakthrough Artist 2015 in the City Life Awards. The results will be announced in January, but in the meantime, Dave Warman went to their studio to discuss their breakthrough year. Pros. The latest Manchester band to strike up a chord in the city. The 
It's been a remarkable year for Stratford trio Mike, Dave and Lee, capped by receiving a nomination for the Best Breakthrough Band in the City Life Awards. The band have had their first single, Run With Faith, broadcasted live on Channel 4, BT Sport and Match of the Day in 2015, picking up a lot of admirers along the way. The group have attracted a lot of interest from Spotify in recent months with over 50,000 views and selling out venues across Greater Manchester. The band are happy that their work has been noticed and are hoping the nomination will help to grow their following in the area. The fans are excited as well, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? Like online and stuff like Because you can't do a gig every week because you will kind of in Manchester until we take over the world, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, So like Don't these things are... Us, will you? <laughs> no, no, not at all. We'll bring you, bring you Manchester with us if anyone wants to come. Yeah, you, we'll just find your job. Can you drive? Hey, can you yeah, take yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I can lift speakers. Yeah. 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 The band's new single has been played out across the town of the Old Trafford on match days, the home of their beloved Manchester United. Having enjoyed a successful 2015, the trio are working hard to ensure that 2016 can be equally rewarding. Just, just basically building the profile and like getting, getting out there more, getting a few more things out, get a lot more music videos yeah. out and, and tour and gig and festivals. Yeah. Festivals. Good turn up to the radio station. Like, right, Run with Faith has been played on this, 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 and this. <laughs> Play this over tune. I want these. <laughs> With the City Life Award results set to be announced in January, pros are hoping they can be the next big name to play their way into Manchester's Musical Hall of Fame. <laughs> David Warman, Keys News. Now, Manchester Piccadilly is home to the first McDonald's restaurant with a high-tech ordering system. Eleni Rigglesworth has more. Welcome to Manchester's first McDonald's restaurant, full to the brim of technology. This branch is the only one in the city with a touchscreen order system and inbuilt tablet entertainment. The new gadgets mean that customers can order their food in minutes. It's a very interactive way for customers that can come in, place their order and then browse the menu themselves and then pay for it and go and collect. We're investing in more staffing in the kitchen to make sure that the food is, because all the food now is freshly prepared and it needs more staff to be able to be delivered. And uh, we're just trying to live up to customers' expectation in the digital age. As this particular branch of McDonald's ventures into the new and digital age, for many, job prospects are increasing rapidly and McDonald's creates the opportunity. And customers think that we've taken a lot of jobs away from the, um, our employees, but we've created a lot more jobs. Using the te technology, we've created 300 jobs, where without that we would have created 125. Um, so we've created a lot more jobs within the community. You could argue that robots will replace jobs, but in this branch's case, it has opened up a window of opportunity for many, many more. Despite heading further into the digital age, McDonald's continues to stress the importance of manpower within their restaurants hence making sure that their core value of customer service is adequately met. There's never room for mistakes in a professional environment, and you could say that for now there's nothing better than the well-trained eye. Eleni Rigglesworth, Keys TV News. So, from fires to fitness, here's Ben with the sport. Well, actually, Zita, it'll be more Big Macs to bikes, especially for the people of Wigan. That's because a new sports centre with an extreme edge has opened in Howbridge. Rebecca Wallace went to get in on the action. Howbridge has installed a climbing zone, a skate park and a soft play area as part of the new transformation. Children over the age of five can tackle the 16 climbing walls here, which feature everything from brightly coloured dominoes designed to chunky black tyres on the wall. I'm here at Howbridge Sports Centre who've just had a massive £3 million to have a look at their new facilities and what's available for our families. The wider transformation of the leisure centre has also seen a raft of new facilities, including a modern 80 station gym, sauna, and even a steam room. I think this is a good opportunity for everyone, uh, like our skaters, climbers, BMXers, and kids who want to come and join in, get a bit of fitness going down there, and uh, they get an opportunity and time to free. One of the most popular attractions is the new indoor skate park. The skate park is open to BMX bikes, scooters and even rollerbladers. It's a good place to come to get fit and it's you can do you do like active sports here all day so people are coming getting fit and enjoying the time with their friends. This is perfect, it's not like really that day, it's like up 20 quid for a month. Pretty much pretty much like the basics of what you've got. I have a 
good time, but in my honest opinion, I don't think it's worth £3 million for the facility itself. Overall, the new transformation has been a total success and everyone seems to be enjoying the new facilities here at Highbridge. I'm Rebecca Wallace for Keys News. Now Manchester is getting into the winter spirit as the sport of curling was welcomed to the city centre this week. The sport is more accustomed to the colder climates of Canada and Switzerland but is now found a place in the heart of spinning fields. The lanes are the first outdoor curling lanes in the UK and are open to the public. It was a, a niche idea that had appealed to the uh, local people around the centre of Manchester. It'd be a fun night out for groups and families. It needs to be commercially viable for us but we're certainly hoping that it'll, yeah, it'll gradually take off and we'll come back again with it. Yeah. Now for a look at this weekend's local football fixtures. In the Northern Premier League, Salford City will be looking to make amends for their FA Cup elimination when they travel to Russell Olympic. In the National League North, FC United striker Rory Patterson will continue on his search for his 100th goal for the club as they look to claim a third consecutive victory, victory against relegation battling Gloucester City. That's at Broadhurst Park. With Stratport challenging to promotion hopefuls Boston United. And in the National League, Altrincham Town travelled to Cheltenham. That's all for sport today, but let's just hope the weather brightens up just in time for kickoff. Well, we're just about to find out that. Joanna, what does the weather have in store for us over the weekend? Thanks, Zita. This morning we had a dry start for most of just one or two showers around before heavy rain. Temperatures stay mild, reaching a maximum of 13 degrees. The rains have cleared towards dawn, however the temperature are expecting to be cooler. Saturday morning remaining very windy with expected showers. The rest of the day is looking to be dry with sunny spells, with temperatures staying in single figures. Frequent showers and noticeably cooler temperatures are expecting to remain all throughout the weekend. Back to you in the studio. Now thanks for that Joanna. Now we all enjoy a Christmas party at this time of the year, but what about those on the other side of the bar? As it's the last Friday before Christmas, I went out to see what the festive period is like for those who work in Manchester's bar industry. Tonight in Manchester, Mad Friday kicks off the last weekend before Christmas. Works parties and big nights out, surely that's a reason to be merry. Mad Friday, Mad Friday, well, um, it's like New Year's, but bigger and better. There's two extremes, you know, when someone gets too drunk, you can either get, go one way or the other. You can be too happy and get angry. So it works both ways. You get a mix of happy people and angry people. And the angry people usually hate the happy people. So they'll tend to start fights with the happy people. I think this Friday is just, judging by the booking, is going to be pretty mental. Obviously, it's not a nightclub, but we're here to have fun still. But we'll probably get a few up on the sofas. We'll turn the music up a bit more than usual. See how it goes, really. The Northern Quarter is one of the most popular destinations for excited revellers, with many bars and restaurants to choose from. Some students may have gone home for Christmas, but venues such as 42s are still expecting to be full to the brim with young clubbers. Dependent on age group, um, obviously people behave differently. Some people use it as a platform um, for bad behaviour. Other people just enjoy the time of year um, before having time off with, you know, with the families for Christmas and things like that. This is probably the quietest you've seen Deansgate Locks, but come Friday it'll be the busiest place in town with an expectation of over 4,000 people. Right, don't forget Mad Friday is coming up. It's going to be immense on the locks. Loads of sexy boys and girls is going off. This is the place to be. Well, our, our company will, will sit down before the Christmas period and run through things, how best to handle things and just, just to, to know what to expect during the Christmas period. So just to be a little bit more lenient with the customers and help them out a little bit more. So like if we've got a Christmas booking and they booked it out, they think that normal rules don't apply to them. If they're drunk, they think they should still be allowed to stay in and all sorts and then obviously when you take them out, you've got a hell of a lot of problems on the door with arguments. So anyone heading out tonight, prepare for the endless queues. Zeta Stevenson, Keys TV News. So, Adam, what will you be doing tonight? Will you be heading out for Mad Friday? Uh, indeed I will, yes. Las Vegas of the North for me, Blackpool. Can't beat it, can you, on Mad Friday? Unfortunately, though, I'm driving. <laughs> so, sadly, that's all we have time for today. Just make sure you keep up to date on all of our social networks, pay our pages, as well as Twitter. Thank you very much for watching. Have a fantastic Christmas, and we're back in January. Goodbye. Thank you, and goodbye. <laughs>